something so you could, you like could, that. You could um, advise, though, couldn't uh, you? Senator, yeah. I could. Let me say, though, that, that this, the mere fact of registration um, might not necessarily change the outcome. Um, you know, somebody would say, quite, that wasn't my drone, or my drone was stolen, or I wasn't using my drone. Mr. Carmody, the serious matter of regulation you, 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 does not resolve the problem. Do you believe the that the registration of motor vehicles, where they've got registration plates that are visible, doesn't impact on the behaviour of people robbing banks? And no, I'm, it, no, I'm, it I'm does, the, 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 Senator. I, I agree with you, Senator. I agree that it does. Let me, but I'm drawing my comparisons from other regulators. And as far as I know, if I use the United States comparison again, they have not entered into any, with the 800,000 regulated registered drones, as far as I'm aware, the registration of the drone has not been used in any case for prosecution. That's just the point that... It, All right. Uh, let, me, let me put a question to you another way. Do, do, you, do you... Sorry, uh, Nick, if you just... So, do you... I asked this question earlier. When, when you've got two pieces of tin in the air, right, so we've got a drone mm -hmm. and we've got a, a, an aircraft manned by a, a human being, a pilot, um, if those two come into contact in particular circumstances, let's go drone into turbine, uh, it really doesn't matter that one's this big and one's this big, correct? Uh, Senator, um, technically it may not matter. I mean, the point about drones is that um, uh, they come in varying sizes. Some are quite small. I appreciate that. Just come back. The, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very hypothetical question. So. Oh, no, of course it is. But one has a living human being who's thinking about the conduct of their bit of tin, who have been trained for thousands of hours and meet all sorts of requirements. You're monitoring them. You've, you've got them on a radar. They've got to tell you when they take off and when they land. They can't fly into this, that and the other. The other one could have a 13-year-old on the ground operating it, right? So it's, to me, they're equivalent in the event of a catastrophic contact Yet it seems as though you and others don't seem to be concerned that the person on the ground with piece of tin number one could be of any age, they could be intoxicated, they could be having a complete disregard for the pamphlet that comes from China in, in, in operating. I've been in the presence of two drone operators in the last month who weren't aware of my involvement with this, who took their drones out of sight, they took their drones out of sight, across any number of properties. It was a, it was a semi residential area at a beach. So I'm telling you my own experiences with it, people are ignoring your piece of paper from China. So I ask you, why do you make the, the pilot spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases, tens of thousands in most? Why do you make them go and have their heart checked every 20 minutes? Uh, why do you have all of those regulations around the operator of that piece of tin, yet this piece of tin Virtually nothing. That's, that's the, that's the okay. real burden of my argument. Uh, if I can answer a couple of parts of the question, Senator, that you raised. Firstly, um, in the box, the only reference in the box is a reference to our website, which covers all of the material. It doesn't actually explain, the piece of paper doesn't actually explain what the rules are. They tell them where to go for the rules. The second, the second point, Senator, that I need to make is that, that we, have a re I've, we have a regulatory regime for uh, high capacity passenger transport. I have a regulatory regime for charter, I have one for aerial ag, I have one for all sectors. We have different requirements on pilots. We have, we have a, if you like, a, a, a different safety requirement. We have a regulatory regime for unmanned aerial vehicles as well. And all I'm saying at the present time is we, the regulatory regime is designed to keep them separate. Some people will behave badly, I understand that. But the, and some people who are very highly trained Pilots will behave badly as well. That's why we have a regulatory regime. That's why we have regulatory oversight. That's why we prosecute drone operators when we, when we discover that they have done the wrong thing and we have prosecuted. But the regulatory regime is designed to keep these remotely piloted vehicles separate from air transport and large aircraft. And at the present time, statistically, it is succeeding. All right, if we had a training program that uh, made the operator of a drone bring them up to a higher level of competence than going to your website in terms of testing their proficiency, their eyesight, their reflex capacity, all the sort of things you do with pilots. Do you think that would make a positive contribution to increasing air safety in the prospect of drones and aircraft 
coming into contact with each other. Senator, we do that in the uh, in the above two kilograms. Well, we space. understand that. That's, Mr. that's Carmody, we're very that's, familiar with the area. That, that's, so that's where we actually do it below the two kilogram space, where we have we have commercial and recreational activities. Um, the cost the cost is thousands of dollars. So there's a cost imperative. It would probably close down who, the, the cost industry. To who? Well, it's a co it's a cost to the drone operator, Senator. The the point that I made before about our numbers. We've had 5,400 people come to us since September last year when we deregulated the two kilogram market and told us how they will operate, where they will operate, and that they understand the rules and that they it's will follow the, the commercial rules. commercial operators. That's not the other 48,000. That's, that's, that's not the other 48,000. That's not the recreational operators, no. no. That's right. So, but so the, the point of that is we've got, two th we've got 4 per cent of the marketplace who've got their drones up there covered. What about the other 96 per cent who are less likely to be responsible individuals, in my view? Well, um, they may well be less responsible, Senator. They may well be more responsible. I can't really answer that question. Um, the, the, if you put in a regime to have them trained and registered, it would cost much more than it would cost to purchase a drone. Uh, and if, that's, you know, if that was... Uh, if that was the outcome, I think that's what it would do to the, to the industry. No. I don't. We do this with yeah. motor vehicles. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to get. A, so uh, an individual who drives a motor vehicle that may have the prospect only to kill themselves and one other passenger. Uh, we there's, there's all sorts of things in terms of proficiency and training before they're allowed to go and operate that piece of tin. Correct, Senator. I right. understand that. Uh, plant and machinery. Nobody can get on a tractor, a dozer, a digger, a bobcat without having to go through and be trained up in proficiency so they don't run over just one other worker in the workplace. But people can get onto a push bike, Senator, around the country and not be oh, registered. Mr Carmody, I, Mr. Carmody been drinking quite in, seriously, in I find your defence of these matters yeah. almost yeah. offensive yeah. to the theme that we're putting to you. Yeah. And I've got Senator, no confidence in your administration. Chair, I've got no further questions. Chair,